But never mind. Oh, okay. shall stand at the latter day on this earth. Though after the skin worms have destroyed this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself. certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are sojourners. Strangers, as were all our fathers. Our time, life here on this earth, are as a shadow. Yet there is none, none divided. Lord, make me to know my name. measure of my days, what it is that I might know how frail I am.
why well, I know that thou will bring me unto death. Thank you. 
lift up my eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, made heaven and earth. When I suffer thy foot, he moved. Celebration of life 
for Sister Alicia Clark Baskerville. Let it begin. A time to give and a time to lose. 
a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend, a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. May God bless the hearers and the doers of this most holy word.
education. I am a fan of Marvel Comics. I love the Avengers. Watch it every time you come on. Something about the Avengers. Superman came to Earth because Krypton was destroyed. His father brought him to Earth and he gained supernatural powers. Batman came about because his mother and father were coming out of a movie one night and they were murdered. Thus he wanted to fight crime. Spider-Man came about because he was in a lab one day and got bit by a spider. His uncle Ben died. He wanted to fight crime. Wonder Woman came about. Her mother carved her out of clay so that she could be a help to all of humanity. And today we come to celebrate Wonder Woman. This is a fight. No matter how spiritual, no matter how holy, we try to be in this sacred place called sanctuary today. This is a fight. I know that we like to say that God won't put more on you than you can bear, but that's not what Paul said. Because Paul said sometimes the weight gets so heavy, my back almost broke. This is a fight. To stand here and sit here and Try to get yourself in a, in a mode that says God is good all the time and all the time God is good when your heart has been broken. This is a fight. But chance is what I've learned about fights. Anybody who's ever been in a fight, that when you are facing an opponent and you've tried to dodge this opponent, you tried to stay away from this opponent for so long, the day comes when you finally got to fight that fight. And here's what I've come to understand, that when I'm in the middle of a fight, I can't let just anybody hold my stuff. Y'all know how a fight goes, and when you're getting ready to get in the fight, whatever you got on you that's precious, whatever you don't want broken, whatever you don't want destroyed, whatever you don't want messed up, you find somebody around you and say, hey, hold my stuff. Y'all, I'm trying to give you words of comfort the other day. Alicia was in a fight. And she said, you know what? This is this is the fight of my life. I don't know if I'm gonna make it through this, this fight. So she looked around. Mama couldn't hold us stuff. Daddy couldn't hold us stuff. Chance, you couldn't hold us stuff. No, nobody in this building could hold her, her stuff. So she turned around and there was a man there. He's the bright and morning star. When you look at the flowers, he's the lily of the valley. There was a man there. She said, this is the only one that I can trust to hold my stuff. So she said, I'm in the fight of my life. So, so Mr. Man, I need you to hold my husband. I, I need you to hold my children. I, I need you to hold my family. I need you to hold my stuff. I need you to hold my community. I need you to hold every mother that's in the room, every, every father that's in the room, everybody that's struggling with grief. God, I need you to hold my stuff. And the comfort is, is that he'll hold you. The songwriter said, all in his hands. I put it all in his hands. This and that. Put it all in his hands. No matter how great or small, he's the answer to it all. We put it on. You put it on. All of us put it on in the Lord's hands. We pray for you as a man in a rural community that has served us with dignity and integrity. Your son has been out on neighborhood pickup, garbage pickup for the, your whole family. We honor you all today. And it is something that you never think about the fact that one day the undertaker is going to need an undertaker. We love you. We love you just not.
not for the service that you give, not just for the good pork steaks that you make. <laughs> but we love you unconditionally, and we tell you from this day forward, you will never walk alone. God bless you and God keep you.
to acknowledge resolutions from Mount Vernon Baptist Church, Chicago, Illinois, Reverend Dr. Johnny Miller, pastor, Middle West Tennessee Funeral Directors and Morticians Association, Ms. Vera Thompson Johnson, president, and Alicia Thorpe Baskerville, secretary. Mount Orange Missionary Baptist Church, Trenton, Tennessee, Pastor Ray Van Adams, and Mount Zion Baptist Church, uh, Reverend M.A. Richardson, Senior Pastor. I'll be reading a resolution from Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church, 106 Glass Street, Jackson, Tennessee, Reverend w, Reginald W. Curry, Pastor. Resolution and living and loving memory of Mrs. Alicia Baskerville. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto them also that love his appearing. 2 Timothy 4, 7-8. Whereas Sister Alicia Baskerville professed a hope in Christ and became a member of Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church in Jackson, Tennessee, she was with, us, was with us for a short period of time, but her sweet spirit will always be remembered. Whereas in the providence of God, he brought us to a close the life of Sister Alicia Baskerville. We, the pastor and officers and members of Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church, feel that is, it is befitting to express our condolences to her entire family. We extend to each of you, Chancellor, Janice, Kaysen, and the entire family, our deepest heartfelt sympathy, love, and prayers that God will sustain you during this time. We join you in believing by faith that Sister Alicia has found rest and peace. Be it resolved that we want you to know that we share in your sorrow, but more importantly, we recognize that your loss is heaven's gain. We encourage you to lean upon the everlasting arms of Jesus because earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Therefore, be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy be kept at the Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church Archive. Humbly submitted on this 23rd day of March in the year of our Lord, 2024. May the peace of our Lord and Savior rest with you during this time. Reginald Curry, Pastor, Tanya Thompson, Church Clerk. Acknowledgements. It is with grateful heart, hearts the family of Alicia expresses sincere gratitude to each of you for your prayers, cards, monetary donations, food, phone calls, text messages, Facebook posts, flowers, and all acts of kindness shown towards us. A special thanks to our cousins, Lester and Virginia McLean. They have been in this, on this journey with us from the very beginning. Virginia providing her personal and professional knowledge, opening their homes, providing a place for us to stay when we had to make those trips to Vanderbilt. No matter the time we arrived, she would have she would have a hot meal waiting for us. Lester and Virginia, we are grateful. Also, a special thanks to you all, to all of you, all of the nurses uh, and staff with the Vanderbilt Oncology Unit and Critical Care Tower, floor 10. There are no words to express our gratitude. We are so grateful. Williams, Tharp, and Baskerville,
truly thankful for the opportunity you had to share with this beautiful lady. Can you take a moment to give God the praise? Coming down from God out of heaven, 
prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with me. And he will dwell with them. And they will be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write. These words are true and faithful. I'm not going to give text or thought. I'm just going to take a moment to talk about what I'm going to talk about. Because Alicia has done what all of us ultimately will have to do one day. If the trouble of God don't sound, our days are numbered. We all have to leave here. So she's done what all of us will ultimately have to do. In fact, I will tell you today that there's nothing we could have done that would have extended her stay here because she had done all that was assigned to her hand to do. When our assignment is done, we must leave this place. So she's completed her assignment. She was and is a beautiful spirit. Wonderful lady, loved beyond herself, in that she was selfless in her showing of love. And I stand here today to tell you that it's all right. It's all right. She's now resting from her labor. And so today, although our hearts are heavy and we, we're sorrowful and certainly we're going to miss her because I found this out. When we love, we love hard. And when we lose, we lose equally as hard. And so it's all right to shed tears. Some of those tears may be tears of sorrow, but I do believe that in the days to come, maybe even right now some of those tears will be tears of joy because we had the opportunity to know Alicia Bassett Amen I like what David said earlier about the superheroes because uh, a few weeks a few weeks ago um, Janice called me and and she summoned me to go to Nashville. And I've learned uh, through some heartache and pain of my own that procrastination is not good. Procrastination uh, may cause missed opportunity. So I believe she called me on a Monday and I told her that, you know, I would, I would get there one day this week, but then the Spirit spoke and said, don't make the same mistake you made before. Yeah. So I prepared on Tuesday, Tuesday morning, to go in and visit Alicia there in, at Vanderbilt. And of course, Chance was right there by her side. And before I left that day, told Chance these words because I watched him. And I had seen this picture before, but now I was able to visualize it again 
Y'all, he never left her side. I tried to, I tried to get close to her, and you know, he wouldn't even let me get too close because, you know, when she needed him, he wanted to make sure he was right there. I told Chance these words before I left that day. I said, man, number one, I love you. And we, we need to learn, especially men, there's nothing wrong with telling another man that you love him. Be spiritual and understand that we all should learn to have love for one for the other. I said, man, I love you. Uh, I love you cuz, I said, but you're my hero. Those are the words I, I tell you, you're my, you're my hero. I said, I don't know if I could have done what you're doing. It takes special people to do what you're doing. That, that can't be for everybody. But he chose you because he knew you could handle whatever he put before you. And I tell you today, Chance, and I think I told you that then, you don't have to hold your head down about anything. No doubts of whether you did or didn't. You did everything you were supposed to do. You fulfilled your call as a husband. Casey, I'm proud of you. Because through it all, you've, you've gone about the day doing what you need to do to make your mother proud and to make your father proud and the rest of the family. You, you've made us all proud and we're here for you. In the days to come and even now, we're here for you. We love you. Savior and the grandchild, I never did get the opportunity to meet, but I say to you, we were all blessed to have Alicia in our midst and a part of our family. We thank you for understanding and knowing that she loved, she loved us all. This, this one thing Alicia had, and, and, and I began to ponder with my mind as well, and I'm fixing to go. Uh, I'm, I am a Baptist preacher, but I'm, I'm very short when it comes to funerals, so I'm, I'm not very long. So. I'm going to be out of your way in a moment, but this is one question that pondered Alicia's mind uh, from, the, from the first time she was diagnosed um, with her condition. She asked this question that I know many probably have asked when they're faced. I've even asked a question myself, even in my own sickness, I've asked a question, why me? Because see, Alicia did every, she, everything she could to get it right. You know, was she perfect? No. But she strived every day to get it right, which is something we all should do. We should strive every day to get it right, even though we may stumble along the way because we're not perfect. We should always strive to do that which is right. She strived to do that which is right. And she wondered and ponder within herself, if I'm doing everything I can to do what is right, why am I going through this particular challenge in my life? This is where we are today in the text, and then we're going to go. Sin, not of her own volition, but from the beginning of time, yeah. with the fall of man, Open the door that sin now dwell within this earth. What was intended for God to be heaven on earth was destroyed by disobedience. Adam, Adam caused what we experience now because uh, he was instructed uh, not to partake certain tree in the midst of this garden, this heaven on earth. Because it was not God's intention for man to die. 
because he made him in his likeness and in his image. Certainly he wouldn't want to kill himself. So he made man in his likeness and his image with the intent for them to live in heaven while yet on earth. But again, disobedience brought forth sin. Now, every creature that's born of Adam now has to experience sickness, death, all the things that were written in this particular chapter. When he talked about pain and sorrow and sickness and death, all of these things have come about because of the disobedience of man. And it didn't have anything to do with her. Because if it happened to a green tree, we are no exception. And so this could have happened to anybody, but he chose her because he knew that even in the midst of her sickness, even in the midst of her sorrow, she would never ever fail to give God glory and give God honor and give God praise. She fought a good fight. She kept the faith. And she did everything she possibly could to encourage others even though she was going through. So she left an example for all of us. Father, don't you know sickness sometimes will make you angry? Don't you know sickness sometimes will cause you to be upset and frustrated? Don't you know going through your sickness sometimes will cause you to even get frustrated with your creator? Those are natural feelings from all of us. In the midst of all of that, she yet knew that there was a God that sat high. There was a God that looked down low. And that one day, she would win. She won the other day. Because the text says that, that she's, she's, now, she's now waiting on that opportunity for the trump of God to sound. And this new Jerusalem to come forth. She'll be in the midst and she'll be a part because she did believe in God. So that's the real that's the real challenge for each and every one of us who are yet still alive. Be sure and very sure that you have the right relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because if we have a right relationship with Jesus one day, we'll have the opportunity to see her again. This is not the end. This is just the beginning. But he says, behold, I make all things new. I don't know about you all, but I'm going to tell you this and we're going to go. I was always excited about the first day of school because about two or three weeks before school would start, uh, my mother would, my mother and father would, would get us our, our brand new pair of shoes for school. I don't know about you all, but we got one pair. And that lasted till Christmas. And you better make it last till Christmas because if you didn't, you weren't going to get another pair. And then we get another pair at Christmas. And if we kept the first ones up, we may have two pairs to take us out to the school year. But I was always excited about that, those new pair of shoes because, you know, every year they would come out with, with some other kind of, you know, some new shoe, some new style. And, you know, mom and dad would at least try to get us the newest style and what have you. But I was excited about that new shoe because she would give them to us and we would have to put them up until the first day of school. What they didn't know was, was, you know, in waiting, the anticipation of having those new pair of shoes on, I just couldn't wait. I couldn't stand knowing that those new shoes were in there and I could walk around with them on. So what I would do is I would actually go in, get them out of the closet, and walk around in the room with my shoes. I may not go outside, but I'd walk around the room because of the excitement of having those new shoes on. And oh, when the first day of school came, you couldn't tell me nothing. I was ready to put those new shoes and go out and, and, and let everybody see my new kicks. Uh, the other day, the other day, the Lord revealed to Alicia her brand new. There was a new body that had no cancer. There was a new body that had no sickness. There was a new body that had no pain. And when she saw her brand new, she 
could wait to put on her brand new. I just thank God for Jay that he gave her the opportunity to receive her brand new. Thank your brand new baby. We'll see you in the morning. made all that possible one Friday on a Hillcock Cavalry when he laid down his life that we might live an early Thursday morning. I heard him say, victory is mine. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? All power is in my hand. I thank God for brand new and he made it all possible by the sacrifice that he made that we may, we may have our, our brand new. Where are your brand new, baby? I'll see you in the morning. God bless you.